All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're looking at the actual thing, the real deal, the master controller. So uh, in the scene right here, which you have access to, you can find it inside of your uh, module downloadable materials. Um, you'll find this little guy here, which we've seen previously in the scene setup. Um, and this one is actually the one with the master controller. So what I can do for this scene, if I want to be seeing the master controller right now, it's pretty much just your basic rig that you can animate in the same usual way as before. So it doesn't take that away from you. You can still uh, animate that. Um, now, if I want to find the handle, uh, these have been set up directly inside the group of the rig, depending on what it is. Uh, it might be located in a certain place. A good idea is to um, call the nodes uh, of the master controller by a certain naming convention. For me, it was just MC, so I can actually search for them instead of going through all these groups and everything and kind of look for something specific. So I'm just gonna look for MC, press enter, and find those in here. These are actually located inside the head group right here. So we have the rest of the entire head in this character right here. And um, so I have these two nodes right here, which have been placed inside of uh, backdrops just to make them show up more easily inside of your group. And I've got orientation and lip sync, and I've got orientation controller. So uh, this one will basically just uh, affect the position of the head while this one will affect the position and the lip sync. So you don't want to turn on both of them at the same time because these both have the orientation in otherwise you'll get two uh, manipulators showing up and that's not necessarily something that you'd want. So um, I'm going to show this one to you guys first. So to be able to see it you need to click on the node and then go and press show control. So as you may have noticed, the script took a few seconds to load. Uh, this is a completely normal behavior. As you show the controls um, for the particular master controller, it is going to take a few seconds to load up the script. Um, once it's there, you no longer have to worry about that delay. So now I can grab either the point here or here I've got my lip sync slider, which I can use for changing the mouth. And over on this one, I have the position slider that we have for the head right here. So um, this is basically how you're going to move it. You'll position the point this is going to set down a keyframe if I need to change the position and have them look over here. This is going to set another keyframe and then from one pose to the other, I can simply go as I would with any other rig and turn on the motion keyframe if it's not already. And this is going to transition between both poses. Now, of course, you might get some pops here and there, especially in the Z depth axis. Uh, this is completely normal. Uh, this is because this is a 360 rig. The same would happen uh, with the 360 rig, whether or not you would be using the master controller. Um, and this is just certain pieces that need to move to the back or the front of the rig. Um, so we need to make slight adjustments depending on what we do in here. Uh, if you're using a flipped rig, so I have my five views right here, front, quarter front, side. Um, in this particular master controller, I do not have access to the back and quarter back view because these are not compatible with the lip sync slider. Um, so I would need to turn on the other one in order to access those. So I have these right here. And if I were to flip over to the other side, I would need to transition with a middle pose, such as the ones that we have in the center right here, because this is a flipped view from this one, basically. Um, so really easily, you can set up your key poses and adjust a little bit the details and then 
you would have the transition very smoothly. It makes for a very efficient, fast posing. Uh, of course, it takes a little bit longer to set up as at the um, rigging stage, but uh, definitely something that's very powerful, especially if you're creating it on characters that come back through the entire series. Um, definitely a good asset for that. So let's look a little bit more into the programming aspect. I'm just going to load up the script editor right here. I can go under my project scope and get access to all the scripts that are linking to uh, my project right here. So for instance, I have my generate orientation.json uh, script file right here that was created by Sebastian, the friendly programmer who very uh, The script here was created by Sebastian, who graciously helped me to uh, adapt the poses into the script right here. So he created this uh, and along with the other scripts as well. This is the one for lip sync. So for those of you who don't know how to program, this is not going to mean a whole lot to you. But basically we're assigning the keyframes that we created in our previous scene right here into this script window and the other ones as well that we find in here. Um, so basically this is why your role as a rig artist is very important. You're going to put those in there and uh, basically give the programmer all the materials that he needs to implement inside the script. Lucky for us too, um, if we have redresses, if we have other similar characters, a lot of this stuff here can be reused onto other characters. So coming up with the base script for your first character, of course, is going to take longer. It's kind of like a rig. Uh, you would have your first character, you're building the skeleton from scratch, but then from there you can use the same skeleton for your other characters. The same is going to go for scripting. You'll need to um, to reuse a lot of the things that you come up with, the, a lot of the system uh, that you can reuse to really be efficient in creating multiple ones for multiple characters. Um, so you have pretty much all the info in here. Um, as I was mentioning before, these are the assigned key poses that you've created, but not all of the movement inside of your um, inside of your master controller is going to be associated with key poses that you created originally. A lot of these poses are actually generated automatically from the keys that you created. So think of it as the interpolation between two keyframes. But in this case, it's going to be more like four keyframes. It's going to take the four poses closest to the location of the point that I have right now and calculate the median between those four poses so that it can create or recreate as accurately as possible the, um, the proper position while keeping the character in model. So that's pretty much it for the master controller guys. I hope you had fun watching those videos and I hope you have fun with our master control rig. You can grab them from the download materials of the module. Make sure you go and get them, test them out, let us know what you think, and we hope to see more of those in the future.